breaking patterns of failure, uh, there are so many things that we've talked about, uh, the things in our lives, eh? things that things that cause, uh, you know, things that have been causing uh, failure, perpetual failure, okay? Now, today I want to talk about uh, something which is like commonplace, but is not common. I was telling somebody before the service started that uh, my professor used to tell us that common sense is not common. So some things which should be common sense sometimes are are not common okay so I want to talk about lack of patience some of the failures that we have encountered those of us who are here some of you you will agree with me that certain things we failed at is just because we were not patient enough certain things that we gave up on it's simply because we were not patient enough am i am i right is is this something that you relate with you look back and realize if i had hung in one more year i would have broken through because the people who hung in the people who didn't throw in the towel they broke through and you keep seeing them, you know, you realize if you had waited a little longer. Now, I don't want to make people regret <laughs> marrying who they married and things like that. You know, this is not what the seminar is about. But I'm just trying to say that when you reflect, you realize that it could be that you are not patient enough. It could be that you are not patient enough. And then you saw some, something came up and it looked like this is the thing and you went for it and all your savings, you lost them. Because you wanted success and you wanted success now. It's the challenge usually that we have with many of us who are in the middle class. We want to create the impression that we have arrived two years out of campus, three years out of campus, and you find yourself trying to compete with somebody who is in retirement. You see somebody driving a car. You want to compete. You want to also drive a similar car. Because you're not patient enough with the process, you find you take loans that you shouldn't have taken. You find yourself in unnecessary debt that you should not have been in. I don't know whether I am sharing some things which somebody relates with. Lack of patience. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, about the elders, about our fathers in the faith, whom actually the Bible tells us to follow. The Bible tells us to follow them. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 12. It says something about them that through faith and patience they inherited the promises are you with me the promises of god the promises of god they are inherited through faith and patience the one of the things that Bueno has helped me as a minister is something I learned from Andrew Womack. He told us uh, in 
one of the meetings, I don't know if it was a meeting or something, he told us that some things in the ministry, they just take time. You can't ministry, you can't operate ministry like a microwave. You know a microwave, you put in something and you choose the minutes you want. Da -da 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 -da. Two minutes. <sighs> Brings it to you hot. In the ministry, things may not work like that. You pray, you preach, like you know, those are in church planting. You pray, you preach, you do all kinds of things, and you look at the end of the month, and you have three more people who have joined. And two of the older ones have left. <laughs> ah, Jesus. <laughs> three joined to leave. And, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, <laughs> you have to be patient. Um, you have to be patient. Business, those who are in business know. You need patience. You need, you know. <laughs> now, what do I say about the marriage? You need like, you need the, another version of patience which the Bible calls long-suffering. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> long, long-suffering. Yeah. I was telling somebody the other day we were on Sunday we were celebrating one of, our, one of our brothers who had an anniversary. I told the people who are not married, I told them, Whenever you see a married couple separating, uh, celebrating their anniversary, one of the things they are celebrating is the grace to stay. When they had all kinds of suggestions and thoughts to leave, and they chose to stay. <laughs> yeah, I've stayed one more year in this marriage. Stayed two more years in this marriage. <laughs> Hallelujah. Through faith and patience. And when you are patient through a certain phase, then you look back and you're like, but why was I even quarreling about that thing? Like, why were we quarreling about the toothpaste? But at that point, toothpaste almost brought past at your house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you look back like Jesus, why were we quarreling about, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, when, when, when you hear that, when you, you know, they say their marriage is having issues, their marriage is having issues. Some of the issues, when you go to, into them, whenever I call, she doesn't pick my calls. I don't know. She doesn't pick my calls. She doesn't pick my calls. And, you know, sometimes I just need to tell brothers that the, the calls, the phones of our sisters, they have a law. The ringtone is always low. <laughs> you just tell yourself the ringtone is low. Yeah. <laughs> and then if, if, if the phone is in the bag, it's in an inner chamber. Uh, it's in an inner chamber. Like, he would come quite a week. Why, why did you pick my phone? I was charging it. So the brother was so frustrated. Like, how can my wife always be, uh, always charging the phone? She's always charging the phone. <laughs> Through faith and patience, we inherit the promise. Don't give up on that man. Don't, don't, don't give up on your husband. Be patient. Yeah. Somebody here, you need to hear the word from the Lord. Be patient. Be patient. Don't jump out of the marriage. My friend, do you know how many people want to get married? <laughs> but I have to leave. My friend, you don't know how many people want to get married. And they have prayed. They have fasted. You're there. You have a man. Okay. He may not be the best guy around, but... You know, he comes home, he gives you money for upkeep, blah, blah, blah. 
you know, uh, I want to leave. Uh, he, he, he does not give me flowers like the like uh, like uh, Mama's husband. <laughs> okay, my friend. <clears throat> I want to leave. He does not talk to me. Uh, he will talk. Don't worry. He will talk at a certain point. <laughs> he will talk. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. Be patient. Be patient. Eh? Be patient. Some of us, you don't want to volunteer in a certain place to gain experience. Say that. They don't give anything. You know, while we go there, you know, they don't give anything. And then you go for a certain interview. And what is going to give somebody an edge over you is them saying, ah, yeah, I volunteered at this place for one year. I gained useful experience in this thing or whatever. While you are at home sulking, saying, what did I do to you, oh God? You know, what did I do to you? They were gaining experience. Eh. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, the second thing I want to talk about that causes failure. The other thing that causes failure and failure pattern, honestly, it is laziness. It is laziness. I, I wish I could tell you that. Laziness. And I always get amazed when I'm in prayer meetings and believers are casting out a spirit of laziness. I always wonder, really, is there a demon called laziness? A spirit of laziness. Spirit of laziness. Laziness. The Bible, we know the scripture which says, uh, a little sleep, a little slumber. Pastor Gloria can give us that scripture. Hmm? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hand. Do you know what will strike you like a bandit? I'm still relaxed. <laughs> that scripture, it is somewhere. In, that scripture is there in the Bible. Yeah? Uh -huh. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. Yeah. Do you know, there is a scripture which says that a sluggard puts his hand in a dish and does not get it out to eat. Can you imagine being that lazy? You put your hand in a dish and you don't get it out. Yeah. There's another scripture which says, I passed by the field of the sluggard and it was overgrown with thorns. Yeah. I passed by the field of the sluggard and it was overgrown with thorns. Me, I've told people at, at our church, I don't tolerate those things of, Somebody sleeping in our church for three weeks. Three weeks he's sleeping in church. Bam. Uh, I'm seeking God. Seeking God. Uh, God has told me to come here and seek him for three weeks. Uh, there is a neighboring church where I will send you. You can go and sleep there. Nonya <laughs> mukama. Go and seek him while you're digging. There's a guy, a guy who came to church that pastor, pastor pray for me, you know, I don't know. I, I, I have a problem, I have, you know, I, I can't, whatever I try to do, you know, then I've been thinking maybe I come here and pray, whatever, you know, I, we have been at home, we have been drinking water. <laughs> so I asked him uh, in the village, he told me, and, and you know, Pastor, I have a lot of land. I have a lot of land in the village. But my wife, you know why we are here? My wife said she doesn't want to live in the village. That's why we are, they are struggling in the city with a lot of land in the village. Maybe that's why my numbers are not growing that fast. <laughs> because I, I don't say, okay, sleep there. God will find you. Maybe that's why my numbers are not growing. <laughs> I prayed for you. I said, hey, you have a lot of land. Hey. I said, now this wife of yours, are you wedded? I no, you know, we haven't even wedded. I told her, uh-huh, this is how you're going to know whether she loves you. This is how you're going to know whether she's committed to you. 
go back and tell her you're going back to the village to work hard. If she goes with you, then she will be yours. Yeah, because we know a scripture which says, my people shall be your people. Where you go, <laughs> I shall go. You know? Mm. So I sent him back. Yeah. Then another one came and said, I've been moving. God has called me in the ministry. But, you know, I saw this church and there's a way God has told me to be here. For me, God has called me to say, I even had the border border. I have packed it. I don't want to ride it. I want to serve God. I told him, ah, and this church will work hard. <laughs> he never came back. Oh, Jesus. I think I need help. You know, I'm losing people. Eh? I told him, ah, here we work hard. Here we work hard. I don't expect you to be here. But, you know, you're serving God. God has called you. Uh, the man had a border border, which was making money. Sincerely, what can stop you from having a border border and serving God? And we serving God and working. And God has told me to. You know, there are those people. God has told me to stop work. Which God is that? God has told me to stop work. And if, if you tell me that, ha, ah, Pastor, the ministry has grown. Now I have a thousand people to pray for every week. You know, I have, I have, I'm attending to all these people. You know, they are calling me. Today I'm supposed to be in Chigali. I'm supposed to be in, in Mbarara and whatever. I, I think uh, God has told me I need to concentrate on the ministry. There, I will agree with you. <laughs> but the bad, the last preaching opportunity you got was six months ago. Say, you know, we are busy moving around. Six months ago, oh, you are busy moving around. And God has called us to serve him. <laughs> yeah, go and serve him from another place. Yeah. Laziness. Pastor Willie told us about a guy who used, you know, the, the woman. The woman, Pastor Willie had wedded a couple. Okay? Had wedded a couple. And after a while, the, the lady came, to, you know, to complain. Say, Pastor, I don't know. My husband. He drinks baby's milk. <laughs> you know, the fellow, the fellow was not working, would stay at home, and when she prepares milk, <laughs> I told you today I've relaxed. Eh? When the, she would prepare milk for the baby, the guy just wakes up to drink the milk of the baby. Now sincerely, if 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 a woman leaves such a man, you people also tell me, if a woman leaves such a man, shall we start saying the spirit of what the spirit of a myochka, your generation cast? Is there a generation cast there? Uh -uh. Laziness. Laziness. I know believers. I've recommended some believers. You recommend a believer. And then they start telling you, ah, Pastor, the person you sent us reaches there, comes at 9 a.m. to work at 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Hey, you know, I was in prayer. Prayer. They did not hire an intercessor. They hired a worker. I was in prayer. Praying for what? That's why for us in our church, you'll never hear us having those overnights of Tuesday. I don't know. why. Can't, how do you put an overnight for, for Tuesday? Our church has overnight on Tuesday and Thursday. Jesus. Tuesday and Thursday, people are asleep and you expect them to go to work on Wednesday and Friday. They are dozing on the job. Dozing on desks. Ah. There's a, there's a Christians just. Uh -uh. <laughs> if you are to be promoted, you are, let me tell you, bosses will notice hard workers. You can't be promoted. They, uh, they don't promote people to go and sleep at another level. That you have been sleeping at this level. I promote you to go and sleep at another level. Bosses, they notice hard workers. They notice results. Hey, you need to be a hard worker with results. 
be a hard worker in your shop. Now, open the shop early. Be there. There's another scripture. A scripture says, a sluggard says there is a lion in the streets. Have you ever read that scripture? A sluggard. A sluggard says there is a lion. Now, for somebody who is lazy, for every opportunity, there is a lion in the opportunity. <laughs> when others are making, the sluggard can the sluggard can preach to you about the lion. The lion in mobile money business. The lion in the food business. The lion in the uh, retail business. The lion in border border business. <laughs> They have a lion in marriages. The lion, there is a lion everywhere for a sluggard. They can preach a series about a lion. <laughs> they, they will not fire you for. <laughs> Are you getting this? Ah, oh. you need, And sometimes you find a certain cocoon some people have met, and the only conversation they are just discussing about lions. So it's it's about which lion is bigger. The lion. Transport business. Lions. They are talking about lions. Start a drug shop. Ah, ah, ah. There is a lion. There is a lion in the world. There is a lion in the dealing in clothes. There is a lion in dealing in hats. There is a lion in dealing in shoes. You talk about farming. It's like, oh my God. Farming. How can you do farming? They have a lion in farming. They have a lion, they have a lion everywhere. And wherever they are talking about lands, people are doing that. People are buying houses. People are buying lands in the lands they are talking about. Yeah. A sluggard says there is a lion in the street. There is a lion. There is a lion. There is a lion. God calls the sluggard to start a church. The sluggard says... They will say, I go under the water. See the lion in planting a church. See the lion in doing. I, you pray for the sick. They say you use strange power. The sluggard says, that, see the lions everywhere. Excuses. The other word for lion is excuses. Excuse. Excuses. Uh, <laughs> excuses. Stop giving excuses. Stop giving excuses. Stop giving excuses. Like you don't want to sleep so that you can't dream. That's the sluggard. Uh, do we have time for another point? <clears throat> Glory to God. Now, the other thing about uh, the, 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 the why we fail many times is this thing called fear. Fear. Now, fear for it, it's a spirit. It's a spirit from the enemy. <clears throat> but we must not allow it to grow. The spirit called fear. Fear. Some people, the fear is at other levels. Fear to stand, fear to sit down, fear to talk, fear to keep quiet. Like you fear. Like you fear. And some of my ministers, I force them to do certain things. I tell them, you have to face that fear. You have to face it. You fear to stand before people. I tell you, you're leading the service. You're leading the service. <clears throat> you're the one preaching. You go there and we see whether we shall fail to get what to preach. The fear, the fear of failure, the fear of failure. You think when I stand there, I'll make grammatical mistakes. Are you standing before English people? Are you, stand, are you preaching in UK? You know, you are standing, all of us, we studied English. All of us, we studied English and our English is still a work in progress. And you, you're there fearing that what if I reach there and I just... <laughs> <laughs> like I was seeing, I was seeing on some group and somebody saying that that uh, that campus took to me. <laughs> they were asking somebody where they are. 
Der Campus duckt mich. Genau. So. <lacht> so, ich sehe dann. I like my God. By the time you come back, you can't delete for all. It's already there. It stays there. Now, you fear to post anything again. Because of the past mistake. You know, the past mistake. Fear to stand. The, the, the fear. Fear of failure. Hmm? Fear of, I wrote something. There is a fear of the future. There is a fear of losing friends. Yeah. Some people are in certain groups. They don't like the group. They don't like the things that happen in the group. But they fear. Ah, I might lose these friends and whatever. Do you know there are people who, who lose money? They lose money. They go into some kind of investment. Let's say, for example, you keep attending certain things or because you fear but they will not come to bury you. Hey! <laughs> there are certain people who do certain things because they fear that they will not come to bury them. <clears throat> yeah. That point, I will not stretch it any further. But you know what I'm talking about. They will not come to bury me. Yeah. Not come to bury me. I can assure you, I have zero fear about being buried. I know they will, you'll deal with the body. <laughs> you'll deal with the body. <laughs> you'll deal, don't, if you have been fearing, they will not bury you, whatever. Just, just, just relax. They will deal with the body. Yeah. Even your enemies. The, your, your enemy of enemies will have to find something to do to deal with your body. <laughs> to deal with your body. Yeah, what if I pray and the person doesn't get healed? I mean, am I the one who made them sick? You know. <laughs> you just have to overcome. You have to start talking back to these voices. Start talking back to these fears. Yeah. You remember the thing. God, you had to always tell these people, <clears throat> have I not told you? Fear not. Fear not. There's that scripture, wonderful scripture in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 13 to 14. Isaiah 41, verse 13 to 14. Wonderful scripture there. Ah, I pray that you go with it. It blesses somebody here. Isaiah 41, verse 13 to, to 14. I, I read it. I liked it. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand. I'm the Lord who says to you, fear not, I will help you. Fear not, you warm Jacob. <laughs> you men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord your Redeemer. If you are facing any fear right now, if you're dealing with any fear right now, let this be your memory scripture. It's a promise from God. I am the Lord who says to you, Fear not. I will help you. Fear of what people will say. Fear of what people will not say. Fear of, you know, fear of... <clears throat> some people, honestly, some people are not married because the right person hasn't come along to propose, whatever. But some people, they have had opportunities and whatever. Okay? But they have that fear. Of, what if he changes? Hey! I mean, what, do, what will you do about it? What if he changes? <laughs> what, if he, what if he doesn't change? Oh, oh for even him, what if he fears that what if you change? You see, the problem is that we always apply it on the other person and whatever. We always apply all these things on the other person. I remember when we were in a conference and we invited Becky to preach to us and Becky's opening statement was, would you marry you? All of us, <clears throat> all of us were humbled. We started reflecting. Would I marry me? Would I marry me? You're always saying, what if he does what? What if he does what? what? How about you apply it to yourself also? <laughs> Hallelujah. Fear. Overcome that fear, please. The Bible, <laughs> the Bible says God has not given you a spirit of fear. Okay? God has not given you a spirit of fear but of boldness, of love, and of a sound mind. <clears throat> Begin to operate in the spirit of, 
of boldness. Begin to operate in boldness. You know, step out. The thing that you fear to do, step out. Step out and do it. Step out and stand before the people. If you you feel you are a, a singer and you fear to make mistakes when you sing, uh, stand up and say, I have a song. <laughs> I tell don't overthink. Don't overthink about the fear. That's when people start. Somebody stand up and say, "I want to song a sing." You know, because you have over meditated on the thing. You have over meditated on the thing. <laughs> you know, just relax. Tell the people, "I want to sing a song." Okay, and then sing the song. If the song doesn't work out, you just tell them, "I don't know what's wrong with the sound guys today." But next Sunday, the sound guys will be better. Yeah, blame the sound guys, blame the what, the weather, something. You'll sing properly next time. But try. Hallelujah. Try. Try. Try out something. Don't keep saying, what if I had done it? What if I had... You know, try. You know, the weather, the weather affected my voice this morning, something. But try. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have talked about patience. You need it if you are to succeed. We have talked about hard work. You need it if you are to succeed. We have talked about fear. You need to overcome it if you are to break the patterns of, of failure. And for Christ's sake, please, stop a excuses. At, at a certain point, people will get exhausted by you. You know, when somebody is always giving excuses, at a certain point, they start to be exhausting. You, you, people will start getting tired and exhausted of your excuses. Like today it's this one, tomorrow it's that one, tomorrow it's that one. You always have an excuse until people start saying, "Which lion is she going to talk about today?" You know, which lion? You know, uh, just, just, just stop the excuses and at least come and say, "You know, I have told you that time. This time I tried it, and things have not worked." So that somebody says, "You have tried out something," but ah, the lion, the lion in the world, the lion in the world. Yeah, you are going to lead the session. What if I trip when I'm climbing the platform? Jesus, you know, you're fearing all kinds of things. I might trip while climbing the platform. I might one of those wires on the platform might trip me and I fall down. You know. <laughs> Sometimes I have, you have all those fears. What if I'm preaching and then my zip is open? <laughs> those people have all kinds of fears. Just overcome those fake lions and serve God. Hallelujah. I, I should stop here. This is enough for the day. Have you been blessed? Glory to God.